Fritwell. I'm in Fritwell. This is called Lodge Farm Fishery or Fritwell Pools to some people. Um, never fished here before, but I've been meaning to for ages and ages and ages. It's very, very local to me. And um, I've just got an evening session. It's probably half seven now in the evening already. So I've only got an hour and a half absolute maximum really. And um, I'm going to be fishing paste over micros down the edge. Um, I was coaching someone um, two days ago at Makings and it was unbelievably good pace down the edge and it's not something I do enough of because um, I try and fish other baits a lot more down the edge um, but pace down the edge was unbelievable that day and I need to go and have another go today and just show you how effective it can be so this is my first session uh, just a nice evening session at Fritwell Pools or Lodge Farm and um, all I've got to do now is mix me uh, mix me paste up pretty quick and get fishing I've got all my gear around me I've just got a top kit and um, two or three extra sections might have to put some stronger elastic on because it's very shallow here and the fish are quite big I've been told um, but hopefully we have a nice simple session once I've turned this into a paste I'm going to show you how good paste fishing can be right then before we go any further I've got to make one very very big apology my knees sorry but I've got to get some colour on these milk bottles look I've got a little bit of colour on my knees there but, uh, yeah sorry about my uh, milk bottle legs but I've got to get some colour on them somehow so uh, they're going to be in the shot I'm afraid very humid today by the way it's 23 degrees this evening very very humid very sweaty too hot to be fishing during the day really so anyway this is um, some super crush green Sona Bait super crush green um, which always made a great paste mix so uh, I've been given it back to try again and it's um, it always made a really good um, paste mix so I'm, I'm quite keen to be using it again actually and all I'm going to do is just slop it up really really slop it up till it looks ruined and just mix it up to a real stodge my way of paste fishing especially down the edge is the wetter the better see that's already soaking up all that that's too that's too stiff for me so I'm just going to keep slopping it up and slopping it up until it's all saturated and nice and then it's still going to dry up a little bit and I'll just keep adding water as I go but so it's a nice that's sort of the consistency I want to be fishing with but within two or three minutes that's going to go stiff so I'm going to keep adding a bit more water over wet it to begin with and then uh, keep working at it I don't want to knead it into a ball or anything like that I just want a, a sloppy mess really that's that's just a nice just gloopy that's, um, for going around that hook but the wetter the better especially down the edge you don't need a ball that um, stays stays as a firm ball that you can lift out with your hook I just want it to be as wet as possible see that's really swelled up now a bit more water and then we'll be ready and then we'll go over our rigs and by the time we're start, ready to start this will be just right and what I'll just do is just keep wetting one corner of it to get it dead right and just keep working at it so the three ingredients for today uh, a bowl, um, a tub of water, the paste and I wetted these just before I've, I've set off some micro pellets that's all we need today oh and one of her I suppose <laughs> is a towel because it's messy stuff but that's it, that's all we need today. Paste, micros, and a bit of water. And that's it. So, let's have a quick look at the rig. I've already plumbed it up, and it is two foot deep down the edge. Um, let's just take that tip X mark off. That, that wax crayon mark, should I say. It is actually about, I've plumbed up to here. It's that depth. Let's just mark that, so I'll show you. It's about that depth there. And that's how much further over depth I'm gonna be fishing. I might even push the float even more. Um, you'll soon know when the pace starts uh, sinking the float. But I wanna fish pretty close to depth, depth or just an inch or two over depth with the pace ball not sinking it. So I'm fishing that far over depth to begin with. If you fish too close to dead depth, your ball or pace will just sink your float all the time. So you wanna, there's gonna be nothing at all down the line. This is 020 direct. I've just got one or two shot under the float, which is all it takes to cock, and it'll cock it to about there. And then nothing at all down the line, and a big size 12 hook, direct. And at the moment, I've got green 16 to 18 slick, but actually I might step up to 18 to 20. And then I've got a big pace pop, that's a Guru pace pop, which seems to be okay. 
and we've paced down the edge i have it about what's that eight inches away from the pole tip if i was fishing deeper water i often push it a bit further back basically i cup in my paste and so i want the rig to go in a nice u like that without any tangles you don't want this to be propelling or pro 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 i can't say the word spinning shall we say <laughs> propellering around and tangling itself so by having it in a u shape as you cup in that'll be it but it's so sloppy my pace you must cup it in you can't swing it in or fish it any other way so uh so that's it see how that's just spun there but that should just untangle itself nicely wind's getting up but yeah so that's it that's it that's all we need and i'm fishing a top kitten one and um i have done my cupping kit up so we might as well just feed quickly with my cupping kit um all I'm going to pull in is, what, half a pot of micros to begin with. Don't think we're going to need a lot of bait. Time of day now, they should be coming around the edge. And that's the top kitten one. I've lined it up with a tree there. I'm just going to dump it in from my height. Not too bothered about how accurate it is. Make a bit of noise, pretend I'm packing away. And that should be enough to start with. But we can keep dumping micros in. Tell you what, now, let's put another half pot in. Let's, let's go with it. Another half pot. So technically a full pot. <laughs> and uh, we'll just dump that in. That's it. Lots of noise. And let's have a look at our paste again. So that's already firmed up a little bit. That's already firmed up a little bit. So what I'm going to just do is just keep dragging my hand in and just keep mushing it up. And this will be the wettest part and I can keep altering it to suit. If I want it stiff, I've still got some not so wet in the corner there so that's it so right we've fed that we've already had a look at the rig simplicity itself and um the only other thing i would say is look at the things around you because you will tangle um around uh seat um any sort of paraphernalia around you things like these nettles in front of me and that you need to keep an eye on stuff like that you don't want to get tangled up and generally, I like to have my pole together. So I'm just fishing the top kit in one at the moment. And uh, keep the pole together. So when you have filled the pot, there's one less thing to encourage it to spill. So that's it. I've got a nice big size 12 hook. Big dollop of paste. Quite a big bit. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to overwork it. I'm just going to press it in the middle, fold the hook over, and that's it. And you can sometimes just dunk it back in the water just to make it even gloopier, pot it in. And what we can do, we can put, top it up with micros as well. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. And that's it. So that's ready. Just be mindful of what side you put the paste in because you need to rotate the pole the opposite way. Else it will just tangle over and pull it out on the way out. So if, if the lines, if the hook's going in this way, you need to tip it out that way. Okay. No signs or anything down there, no tails. It's very shallow down there. It's just over, just under two foot actually. So uh, I'm just going to tip it in, level with that tree, blop, and then just pull the float slightly back, and that's going to cock, lovely. There we are, plenty of bristle showing. It's not a finesse tactic, this by any means. And I don't want to strike at any sort of wobbles or anything. It'll either be a great big lift or a wash under. That's already a little indication. Now, even though I've not had any swirls down there, doesn't mean there's no carp there. A lot of places I'm going at the moment, they're coming in really stealthily. It's probably only later on when they start really going for it that you start to see swirls and tail patterns and everything. But it looks like there's a lot of silvers or something down there. There's already some activity. As I say, this is my very first look in. Maybe if this was a match, I'd just feed it once or twice, get some fish in the peg and then go down. But I'm gonna go straight on it today and just see how quickly we can catch. But there was lots of, probably the next two pegs up, lots of activity, lots of mud coming up and everything. But it wasn't so pretty for filming. So uh, <laughs> I've chosen this peg purely because I can actually get a, a closer look at my margin. They're quite tight pegs, quite, um, quite a lot of cover down the edges. So, um, oh, there's a swell, there's one in the peg. If you can see that, but there's a big swell, big tail pattern. Oh, <laughs> about three or four pound carp just jumped out. Okay, so hopefully these will get their heads down. 
and I'm gonna if I don't get a bite in the next 30 40 seconds I'm just gonna put some pace back on the hook and start again we're just constantly feeding the peg that way but in this depth even like bream and things will will color up the uh, will will tail up and everything so I've had a peg which I was convinced was full of car um, several times and I've gone down there and they've been like two three four pound bream so uh, it's not always carp that are tailing up down the edges and even the roach if there's enough of them will, will <laughs> create little vortexes and stuff so we've not had a bite yet so all I'm going to do is come back I'm keeping the pole together I haven't brought my pole roller with me but I'm just using my rod bag behind me and make sure that doesn't spin round wet my hands get in the paste nice big dollop of paste again fold it over and that's it no, no micros this time, we're just going with a paste. A lot of people are really put off by paste fishing, thinking it's messy and complicated and everything, but it's so simple, really. The hardest thing is every time you miss a bite, you've got to rebate. But the beauty of paste is you get really positive bites and they just slurp it in more confidently than anything. You know, some of my favorite margin fishing is done with like double corn or one or two worms but double corn is a bit too selective at times and sometimes a bit too hard for them to suck in if they're a bit wary and double worm you still get perch and roach and skimmers on that when you're trying to single out the carp what you tend to get with paste is carp quality bream big f1s tench the right sort of fish that put a weight together so we just need a few fish to turn up now I'd have liked to fish a top kitten too down the edge, but there's just not enough. It's a little bit snaggier further, and I couldn't find a clean spot. But this is nice because it's in the camera, in the in the line of sight for the camera as well. So, uh, I'm, so I'm going to. I'm, I'm fully expecting a bite, quickish. You know, about a third or fourth drop in. Hopefully, we'll get one. But we had that early swirl, so someone came in the area having a look. And if I was fishing paste out there in deeper water, generally I like more harder, sort of denser particles like corn or hemp or six mil pellets, there's another tail pattern. And so I'm feeding lots of hard particles and the easiest thing to them to slurp up is my, uh, is my hook bait, my paste hook bait. But for this down the edge, I do like fishing over micros, just get them hoovering. But I'm sure we could have fed hemp or, uh, or corn or hard pellets. But micro pellets works really well for me. So we've had another little swell. There's a little carp there poking his head up. Hello. And it's surprising actually that the really, really wet paste seems to congeal together nicely and stay stay where it is. If it was a drier paste, it tends to break down faster. So by having it fully saturated, it actually goes down and seems to stay in a pile. It's nice to have a little test in a glass of water. I think you'll be surprised. And what I'll also say is, the finer the particles of your ground bait, the more it will stay together. If it's quite a coarse ground bait you're using, or coarse ground pellets or whatever you're using, the coarser it is, the quicker it will break down. The finer it is, the slower it will break down. Let's rebait again and keep dolphin it in. I'm not going to put any more micros in now for a little bit. We'll just keep put going in with our paste. Wet the fingers. Nice dollop of paste again. We can vary the size of the paste, but that's a nice size. Dump it in there, get it all nice and soaking wet. Wet the fingers on the towel. Make sure nothing's spinning up. And dollop it back in. Over that tree. And we can use the paste as a, as a plummet really. So if the floats do start sinking, then we'll just move the float up a little bit or pull the float a bit closer into the bank. It's nice to fish paste on a sort of gradual slope because you can tell where your paste is. If that float sinks, then obviously you, you need to push the float up or drag it closer into the bank. There we are. That was the sort of bite we were after. Now I'm close enough to actually settle them. I'm going to squeeze a little ball of micros and just, just throw some more micros in to settle them. 
with it being so shallow, I'm fully expecting them to be a bit angry and uh, tear about a little bit. What I'm trying to do is steer them, steer them away from where I've been catching them. Nice little common. In the next, oi, splash me. I'm gonna get wet legs now, aren't I? There you go, nicely up anyway. It's my first fish at, at Lodge Farm, brilliant. Nicely up, just in the side of the mouth actually that. Let's have a look at him. Let's have a look at him. What did you give him, three pound, four pound? Not, not four is he, three pound. Yeah, first fish, wee. I'm gonna gently put him back. Sting the hand as well. Right, we're in business, and actually, I can see a tail pattern there again. So, feeding those micros whilst I was playing that fish was a good idea. And by the looks of that, I think my float's actually ridden up the line. So, I'm going to hook it back up and check. Yeah, see? See, there's my mark. It's actually slipped quite a bit. Push it down to those two shot again. I'm gonna pop the number three section back on so we're all together. Yeah, it's definitely one or two there still. Wet the hand, nice dollop of paste. Don't overwork it. A few markers in. This is a nice way of fishing when it's right. I just re-plumbed and there was definitely a bit of a rock in the way. So I've just gone a little bit, just like six inches further out the way. Level with those two sticks there, that seems about right. Hopefully this is, the bottom's definitely very uneven down there. There's definitely some fish. <laughs> definitely some fish there. Don't be scared to re-plumb it up if you don't think they're behaving quite right. Just a tractor turned up. This is a working farm, so I'm fully expecting tractors and all sorts. That was a good bite. Ooh. Come on. He's a bit angrier. Very angry. Let's just get another four of my cushions. About the same size, maybe a fraction bigger than the last one. Very angry. Oh no, a little. Uh... Well, it's a lovely fish. Very nice. Oh, she's in the bottom lip. Nice little fish, though. A couple of pound. So, right. I feel I've got it now. That all felt right. Number three on. Generally with this, I, I don't tend to fish it too far away. Top kitten one, top kit two, top kit three is, is ideal. Any further than that, then generally I'll uh, Fish something that stays on the hook a bit more that you can lift and drop. But on its day, even fishing this long is, is good. So level those two sticks, be a bit more precise now. Lovely. So we've had two carp. We've only been fishing probably 10 minutes. There we are. Ooh. Oh. What? <laughs> Never one of my famous stick fishes. Look, that was a good old bite, that. Yeah, I think there's a bit of crap down there. That's giving me a little bit of bother. But we'll carry on. Because that was a brilliant bite. Some would have said unmissable. And pesky stick fish. There's still fish there. But it didn't spook whatever it was. Ha, 
I can actually see a tail now. See that at it on the drop. When it's right, you don't get any time to blink. They're on. He's a bit angry, isn't he? Trying to get round the back of that island. But we're on 020, we've got a 12 book on, you know, we're not we're not taking any uh, prisoners. Give them a little nugget of micros. Keep them happy, keep them mooching around. You could throw some of your paste down there, I've got no problem throwing a bit of paste down there if you don't think they want the micros too much. Just keep them mooching around. He's a lot bigger, this one. This is in the posterior. What do you reckon? It means it's shallow, they want to stay out there. Typical sort of shallow water carp behaviour. I'm trying my best to keep them away from where I've hooked him. He's a good fish, isn't he? Might still be eating. So we could go up to 18 to 20, but at the moment I feel like I'm in control. They're all commons, aren't they? Hard fighting commons. Yeah, so. He's oh, a bigger one, isn't he? Oh, long fish. No wonder he pulled. Probably six pound that. Very long fish. What am I going to do? I'm just going to feed it a little bit more. And then we'll deal with deal with this fish. Yep, right in the middle of the bottom lip again. Quite common with paste, we'll come there. Long lean fish. That spawned I think recently. <laughs> Look at that. Not bad on the paste. If there were loads and loads of fish down there, knocking it off all the time, then I would consider fishing certain paste. But I'd also consider a a more resilient hook bait altogether. You know, a big bunch of dead maggots or a double corn, something like that. There's a swirl straight away, as soon as I've cupped it in. For a moment, everything feels all right, nice and balanced. <laughs> what a great way to shoot. That was a beggar fish. It actually came up to the top one as soon as I upped him. There's definitely fish still there. We've got them going. I fully expect to catch well tonight, you know, evening. Got the lake to myself. Carp o'clock. After a very hot day. He's still eating. Ooh, he's getting bigger. He's messed up my peg a bit. Oh, that's a big fish. They're definitely getting bigger. Oh, that's a fat fish. Now well, that's there the pace fish you want. Let's just uh, disgorge him. Well, coming back here, big long barbules on that fish. They're all in good nick. That's a big fish. He looks a bit angry, so I'm not going to pick him up. That's a proper nice pace fish. <laughs> Let's pull him back. See at the start they were just a little bit unsettled weren't they? But I can actually see ta tail patterns again. So I think we'll have another one pretty quick. What are we on for? What I'm going to try and do is film it with my uh, phone at the same time. Sure, a lot of people don't realise I, I'm just here by myself. There's no one filming me. <laughs> it's easier if you've got someone filming for you. So let's, let's film that. Where are we? There we are. So I'm four times zoom this, just so you can see my flow. So it's not the best quality. But for you to actually see what's going on, 
it'll be all right. It's just waffling around. If it wafts down around a lot more, that's when I'll um, I'll push the float up a bit more as well. Fish more over depth. Not seeing any tail patterns now. But there's definitely something down there, isn't there? I wasn't looking then. <laughs> I'll be on. <laughs> I was not looking. Just looked away for a second and we float shot on there. What's this? Carp number five. Definitely going to feed a bit more down there. I don't mind feeding a little bit out from where I've been catching and bring my pace a little bit closer in. Never common. They can do a weight though, these fish. All long lean ones. All right. Two or three there, definitely now. There we are. Ooh, that feels big. That just stayed there then. That does feel big. not doing a lot. Might be foul looked. Again I'm just trying my best to keep him away from the left but not always that possible. Big fish, big fish. Oh, oh, that. Big. Not as big as he looked, actually. That's it, go over exactly where I've hooked you. Never common. <laughs> He's a pretty one. He's a nice looking fish. He's definitely gone through me peg a bit. Very nice fish. What's that, number five, six? Six, isn't it? Lovely. Thoroughly enjoying this. Who doesn't like a bit of pace fishing? Lovely trap, by the way. I've already met the farmer that, um, as soon as I pulled up, and he's a really friendly guy. And uh, definitely made me feel very welcome, so I shall be back. I imagine there's quite a lot I can fish here as well, you know. Quite a lot of little methods and tactics. This might be my new test venue. <laughs> Once again, I must apologise for my knees. Ooh, look at that. Fish don't mind my knees. One milk bottles. That was perfect then, wasn't it? You know, I still get a mirror. No, another common. <laughs> it's like the last one I just saw. Maybe a touch bigger. Ooh. Missed that one. <laughs> just gonna push the photo just a touch more now. 
Just another inch, just to compensate. Bit, bit of activity down there. Use it as an experiment, seeing so how far over depth I can fish. Slop it up again. You will miss a few bites, but every time you miss your bite, you, you, you're baiting the peg, so it's not a, not a bad thing. Are we on eight fish? This one's going to go pretty quick, I think. Might be foul up the way he's going. It's only a little in. A little foul up, an occasional one. Like any method, when you're getting a lot of fish down the edge. Oh, he's just in the wing. Just in the wing, that one. Just in the flipper. He's took a load of weed with him as well. No yeah, well, I'm done. At least with that strong gear you can deal with them pretty quick. No well, I'm done. Done all that weed. Nine. Ooh, see that hooked itself. Have a little scrapper. And some more micros. Just a nice way to spend an evening, but it's also, without doubt, a match-winning tactic on its day. It's a little me. See if we can catch one more, one more nice big one. And then I'm going to leave a very happy fellow, and he will be back. I'm going to come back and do a few things here. I'm sure. Wallop. <laughs> That's it then. If I get this in, this is my last fish. Thoroughly enjoyed that. If I can get this one in. There we are. Done. Mission well and truly accomplished. Ten car on the paste. My first ever trip, my first ever session on this venue. I think I will be back. Well, this is my last fish, a nice lean. I'm gonna give him four pound, might be three and a half. A lovely lean carp, cracking little fish. And uh, I'm not gonna, Leave him out without the water for too long. And all on the paste down the edge. 10 fish in uh, probably 80 minutes fishing, maybe a bit less. Great stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the bank soon.